Welcome back to Coma. This is our final segment here on City Line. I'm Phaedra Redifer filling in for Amanda Westbrook. And I'm joined here today by two wonderful friends over at T Tacoma Historical Society. I am joined by Bill Barsma, for, former mayor yes. of Tacoma, and also Deb Friedman, and you're the treasurer of Tacoma Historical Society. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. So Bill, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the Tacoma Historical Society sure. in Tacoma, but I have to say I'm, I'm not from Tacoma, oh. but I wish I was. I really do. Um, Tacoma is an amazing place. It we is. have a vibrant and rich history mm -hmm. and something for me that I hold very near and dear. But what, okay. I, what I love most about the Historical Society is that you all are not letting us forget our past. That's right. We are growing, as Mayor Woodard has said, we are growing at such a fast pace in Tacoma. Mm -hmm. But with that fast paced growth, we need to not forget about where we came from. And right. I think so much of Tacoma is defined by what we were in the past, mm -hmm. but where we are today and where yep. we're going to take ourselves in the future and right. you've been absolutely um, kind of a mainstay in Tacoma and you've led us through some some great times and some some not so great times right. but all in all Tacoma is an amazing community mm -hmm. and the work that you're doing um, at Tacoma Historical Society I think makes sure that we don't forget that so thank you for being here and thanks for all the My work that you're doing to be back so with with that um, the Tacoma Historical Society has a new exhibit and it's called right. a century of shutterbugs and right. I am so interested in and I know our viewers at home are very interested in what was the reasoning behind this exhibit? Tell us a little bit more about it. Well, well Deb will get into that in more detail, but I did want to uh, remind everybody that the Tacoma Historical Society's museum is located at 919 Pacific Avenue. That's where the current exhibit uh, is. Uh, we're open Wednesday through Saturday from 11 to 4. Uh, no admission charge, although we gladly accept contributions uh, from, from people who enjoy uh, as we do, uh, keeping Tacoma's history alive. And uh, obviously much of Tacoma's history can be seen in the images that have been taken by the photographers in the past. And so we want to share two elements. First, we want to share some of those images that people can see of, about what Tacoma looked like back in the 1880s and what it looks like today, the contrast. We want to share that with, with people. But we also want to share with people the technology that was used to, to, to take those images. Uh, now we have the uh, the iPhone, and uh, you know, we just pu pull out of our pocket and take the image and not think twice. Back in those days, uh, it was it was a challenge. The technology was was complicated, and uh, and challenging, and for the photographers to catch those image images with those with those with that technology is really extraordinary. And let me give you one example. Ron Kerbyich, who is the noted uh, old town photographer was given the opportunity to use a camera, a hundred year old camera, uh, to take a panoramic, panoramic view of the first pitch that was thrown in Safe, Safeco Field by Mariners, Jamie Moyer. And uh, we actually have the camera and the image that people can see. It took 20 seconds for that, that image to be taken by that particular camera. It's an extraordinary image, but what's interesting is when he started taking the image, Jamie had just thrown the pitch, Jamie Moyer's. And by the time that the image was through, the, the, the strike was called. And so you can see the, the baseball in the air heading toward the plate. And then when you see the scoreboard, uh, which is 20 seconds later, it was a strike. It is uh, amazing what pictures do. And, 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 and that's just one example. And, we, and that camera has taken images of Tacoma. Again, over the years, we have uh, panoramic views of Tacoma that go back to the turn of the cent last century and before. So it's, it's an exciting exhibit, uh, and as I say, there are two parts to it that I think are important. First, the images, but also secondly, how those images were, were taken and, and, and the people that were involved in taking those images. Those are the storylines that we, we are emphasizing. It sounds like a wonderful exhibit. And yeah. Deb, the world of curating is not easy. It takes an enormous amount of time and intentional thought process, not to mention investigative work, research work, and, and certainly collecting the materials. So talk to us about what it was like to curate this exhibit and, and what work uh, went into it, where you are today. <clears throat> this one was an easy one because we had a co-curator in Ron Karabayic. <clears throat> and Ron um, was able to loan to us and donate to us many cameras. He was also able to help us to determine where there are incredible images that we could borrow. Um, but the biggest inspiration for this really was a database that Carolyn Galachi created over 20 years ago as a gift to Ron. And um, he feels that she really is kind of the 
um, the mother of historic preservation in Tacoma. And as a gift to him, she went through city directories and l researched and cataloged every photographer who had a studio advertised in the directories. And she created a notebook of those. And he told us that it was really one of her last wishes that something happened with that database. So we had that database to start with. We had Ron's expertise to start with. So what we did was we expanded that database through 1972, so we could call it a century of shutterbugs. Um, I used to work for the library, so I love doing that kind of research and genealogy. So we found over 25 photographers who worked in Tacoma when it was territorial Washington. And then the next phase of that is that because we have a new website and we can put original research on that, we were able to um, take this data, put it into a spreadsheet, and then convert it to a searchable database on our website. So anyone who finds an old photograph that has maybe the name of the studio on it and has the address of the studio can go to our website, look at that database, and determine approximately what year that picture was taken. So that all of that phenomenal. made it a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. That is a great resource that you're providing because oftentimes we go in our closets or we'll talk to grandma and grandpa and we'll see these photos, but there might not be the recollection of where they came from or what it was. And to be able to have that resource readily available to us, that's, that's amazing. And I think that's another testament to really making sure that we don't lose connectivity to our past. Right. Because that connectivity is going to launch us into the successful future that we all envision for Tacoma. And Tacoma is just absolutely ripe with history and these images with the center, um, the the Century of Shutterbugs exhibit, I think it's going to really give our viewers and the Tacoma community in general a really good glimpse into our past and then the role that photographers played in helping craft our future here in Tacoma. So, so with that, um, I know that there are we think of Tacoma photographers and often. To mind, it, it comes up with the Richards studio and certainly the Richards family. <clears throat> I know that a lot of the images are found in our very own Tacoma Public Library system in the Northwest Room. So, so tell me a little bit about their role in the history of Tacoma and the photographs that we see. And we've actually learned some new information in the process of researching this. Um, we discovered that Paul Richards was in Tacoma in the 1890s, much earlier than we thought. We have access to some of the letters that he wrote. And we discovered that he was working very closely with the Lumi brothers and Bouley in France who had just developed the technology to show motion pictures and he had brand new cutting-edge motion picture equipment and technology in Tacoma in the 1890s so that is new for us to learn that he was involved with that that early um, of course we know that he went on to um, do quite a bit of photography work for the military and went to um, Europe in World War One but then his son Turner uh, started the big photo, photo studio that we think of in Tacoma, but his son also continued in the video work doing cinematography for Disney even. That is phenomenal. Rich, right here in our own right backyard. I might just add to that that, uh, you know, literally t uh, hundreds of thousands of images have been taken by the Richard Studios and, and uh, library has those and mm -hmm. not all of them have been uh, cataloged as of yet. In fact, just a, a small number comparatively. But oftentimes things happen that are kind of exciting when it comes to images. In one case, uh, again, Ron Kerbage came to the rescue. There were some photographs um, that were squirreled away in, a, in some cardboard boxes in an attic of a home up on Prospect Hill, and it was cold, the vacant home. Um, the pipes burst, water was cascading through the home. He heard about that. He came to the rescue, rescued those photographs. And as we were going through those photos, and they're now in our possession, we see this old tattered letter. And we're wondering, well, what is what is this all about, you know? And it's to the dear dear nephew, and it's handwritten, and and I, I'm pleased to share my my um, my advice with you, and and I know that we disagree in politics and so on, and it goes on and on and on. You read it, and at the bottom, it's sincerely yours, Abraham Lincoln. Incredible. Yeah. In absolutely and, and, incredible. And it was a you know, and of course, in those those days, in the days in which this. This letter came through the city of Tacoma. We're not quite sure when, probably back in the 1920s. The only way in which you could capture an image of it was by through photography. And in this case, it was uh, part of that. That particular um, image was in this cardboard box. And we know that it's legitimate because the letter is referenced in the, Ar in the Lincoln Archives back in Washington, D.C. Whether the original letter still exists or not, we don't know. 
we know the content of it is in the archives, and we have an image of that in our collection. Mm -hmm. Pretty special. It is extremely special, and I'm certain people will want to see it. So, Bill, really quickly, we talked about the evolution of equipment, and certainly we all carry our phones, mm -hmm. and the phone, I would not say, has completely replaced the camera, but it is used as a camera right. more often than not. So, what are some trends that you're seeing that museums need to make sure of in connecting our generations of today with technology, but how are the museums advancing and, and, and working alongside that evolution? Well, of course, we have you know new technology, and Deb can talk a little bit more about uh, you know the technology of the past and what we what we have uh, in our collection. Uh, but you know, it's like night and day. I mean, and, and, and it's difficult for people today to fully re fully appreciate. Uh, the challenges that were a part of those early days when people had to hoist up those big cameras and take those remarkable images under incredibly difficult circumstances. And we have those cameras. Um, you see them in old movies uh, oftentimes, uh, you know, the old black and white movies. You may be watching a, a film that was taken back in the 50s and you see all of these reporters and the photographers with the big cameras and the flashing lights and so on. And so we want to, again, remind people uh, of that. Uh, I can remember uh, when I was teaching at the university, the Polaroid camera was such a, a, a breakthrough and I was able to take photographs of, of, of the students in my class so I could, re so that in the second day of class I would know, know them by name. Mm -hmm. I thought, wow, that was cutting edge technology. Today that's archaic. It is a little uh, archaic, but I think the Polaroid is making a comeback. And that's what I, I understand. Think yeah, that, yeah, yeah, it's our kind kids of have unique. Polaroid cameras and I'm yeah. trying to fidget with them and just even try to remember how they work. But yeah. in, in just the, the wrap up of a couple of seconds that we have left. So it is important to come by. Um, certainly I think that you both have outdone yourselves with this exhibit, A Century of Shutterbugs, and, and not just showing the evolution of yeah. the camera equipment, but also to take a really intentional look at Tacoma's past and to see mm -hmm. where we have been and for people who are new to Tacoma to see, actually see where where we're going, but we cannot lose sight of our past. So I encourage our viewers to um, to visit Tacoma um, Historical Society and come and see your exhibit. So thank you both for thank being you. here. I appreciate it. We'll be back. Absolutely, I look forward to it. Yeah. Thank you, Tacoma. I appreciate you joining us today with City Line again. This is Phaedra Redifer, and I look forward to seeing you again. Thanks for being here, and have a great day. <laughs>